and it will be a pause and record kind of situation today. All right, still looking for a few people. Tofu, Magdalene, Ben, Snit, Gadir. I am unpausing slide one. And I'd like you to put in, what do you think? Is it possible for two numbers to have a difference of eight and a sum of four? Difference meaning subtraction, sum meaning addition. Thanks, Kellen. Like I know thread is on a spool, but I wasn't sure what those things were. All right, so we're digging in to figure out if you can have a difference of eight and a sum of one. And I asked you to think of two numbers that do have a difference of eight and type the larger of the numbers in this box. Big variety here. Uh, Selena, for this to work, you're just gonna type in nine. You don't wanna put both your numbers in. Ooh, I'm seeing some four and a halves. That means some people are thinking of negative numbers. All sorts of possible numbers. All right. Slide three. Desmos is gonna predict your other number. And on slide four, you will see your numbers plotted as a coordinate pair. All right, I just opened up one of you and this person is using 10 as their bigger number and two as their smaller. This is what it looks like on the graph when it's graphed 10 comma two. Please make a prediction in this box. What will it look like when we see everyone's points plotted on the same graph? Okay, I'm gonna make your names anonymous and just call out a bunch of possible, what you all think that this might look like. Uh, quadrant one and four might have a lot of dots. Looks like lots of circles. I think that person means lots of dots on the graph. Um, then we do have some said dots on the graph. Ooh, this person said it will look like a line. And this person's like, I either think it's gonna be in the same spot or all over the place. Uh, and down here, whoever I've got is hidden as Jaime Escalante said a line and the same slope. All right, well, let's go to the next screen and see what happens. Here's what our class looks like. Why do you think they're lined up so neatly? I'd like you to really take a moment and look at where your point is and where others are and see if you can figure out why it's making a straight line. All right, probably because the points line up with the quadrants of a value of eight or negative eight. they have a difference of eight. So the coordinate pair has a difference of eight or does the coordinate pair, okay. Uh, all of them have a difference of eight and the numbers of each of us chose. Okay. I want you to think about which is your X and which is your Y in this pair that gave you a point. All right, remember our first question is, can we find 
I'm going to take us back to first question. Is it possible to have the same two numbers have a difference of eight and a sum of one? We've played around with the difference of eight. We're going to play around with the sum of one now. Think of two numbers with the sum of one. Type one of these numbers below. at one time, but I can only share one screen at a time in our setup right now. Um, I'd like to get everybody to look back at slide 10. And I'm even going to change our editing to restrict everybody to 10 for now. Because when I look down what you are all writing, I see you doing what I would expect you to do. You're putting equations into y equals mx plus b form. You're looking at a straight line on a graph and you're using what you know about the fact that this is equaling eight. And I'm seeing a lot of people are writing either uh, y equals x plus eight or y equals x minus eight. And what I wanted to pause us for and have us take a look is I'm not seeing anybody put this in standard form. And I want us to just think about what was our original ask? We were asked to come up with two numbers that when I subtracted them, I got eight. In the next screen, you were asked to type in the larger of your two numbers. So if I put 10, my next number was two and that gave me eight. And that meant my ordered pair was 10 comma two. So I want us to think about that, that this equation could be what gets typed in on screen 10. If I converted that equation, let me add a new page here. x minus y equals eight. If I converted that to y equals mx plus b form, I would be moving the x I would divide by negative one and I would get y is equal to x minus eight. So this version of the equation, and this version of the equation are equivalent. This first one is in standard form. The second one is in slope intercept form. Keep that in mind as you move to slide 11, where it asks you to come up with an equation for the sum of one. something that equals one that was added together, this equation could work, other equations could as well. Um, okay, thank you, Magdalene. All right, again, this is slide 14. 
two different ways that people in class have answered the same question correctly. Uh, they both chose almost exactly the same equation for the first. When our constraint is the sum is six, we have one person who put y plus x equals six, and the other put x plus y equals six. They are both correct. The second constraint is the difference is six, and you'll see we have x is equal to y plus six, or the difference showing subtraction would be x minus y equals six. So the constraint is the rule we're trying to get, and the equations are showing what those are. And we're going to see if we can find numbers that can fit in for x and y that are the same to make both equations true. OK, I was asked about slide 16. And slide 16 is asking about two equations when the sum is 12 and the difference is 5. Um, I've picked three correct answers that are all, um, well, the second equation is slightly different on all three. I think that this is pre mainly prehension and Ben. Um, you can see that when the sum is 12, all three of them put X plus Y equals 12 or uh, Ben put Y plus X equals 12. Um, what I really picked these three for is because their difference equations are all right, but there's three different versions of them here. Uh, the difference of five would be X minus Y equals five. This is saying that X is my largest number, minus five gives me, or a minus Y gives me five. This is the same thing put into Y equals MX plus B form. And Ben has his solve for X instead of for Y. So hopefully that answers um, what some examples would look like on slide 16. I'm going to move my vision to slide 20, where you can see uh, what the slideshow looks or the uh, card sort looks like. You're trying to determine if they are possible or impossible to have both be the, have the same two numbers make both of these constraints work, okay? Um, 